Hello together. Today we want to do something a little bit more interesting. We want to program an I2C sensor with Safia in the NIF Connect SDK. We are using for this uh, um, temperature sensor MCP9808 and we are using the breadboard from Adafruit. You get this for a couple of bucks only. <coughs> so first a short introduction into the I2C for the one who are not familiar with this. I2C is a bus system. Um, we have the two lines, one data line and one clock line and um, every communication starts with the start condition and ends with the stop condition. So start condition looks like this, so that normally uh, the lines are pulled up, um, with pull up resistance, uh, resistors <coughs> and uh, the start condition is then that uh, the uh, data line is uh, pulled to low and the stop condition, the uh, data line is pulled up again. <coughs> so, and um, we're sending always um, 8 bits, so one byte, and the receiver uh, gives us acknowledgement from the communication. Yeah. <coughs> We have two different kinds of um, uh, communications, a read communication and a write communication. A read communication, <coughs> we as controller, we are we starting the communication so, uh, and we want to read from the target, we want to read data. So we are sending for this the start condition and um, send the address of the sensor or the target. Um, plus a 1, so the um, I2C address is normally 7 bits and we add um, a 1 for a read command. And the target acknowledges this then and sends then the amount of data um, until it's finished or until the controller um, gives uh, an acknowledgement uh, uh, that he is finished with um, uh, receiving, that he don't want to receive any further data. And then the controller also make a stop condition to end the communication. <coughs> we have now uh, the names controller and target, the one which are a little bit familiar. This is quite new before, it's called master and slave. Uh, we are to history, uh, uh, they want to avoid it and it's a new um, specification, they call it now controller and target. The so write communication is um, similar except that we are just sending data. So we start again the communication with the start condition, send the address from the sensor we want to target, but then we are adding a zero for the write command. The so target then acknowledges this and sends the controller sends data. <coughs> Normally it's like um, that we are sending a register um, uh, so set the sensor, set then the pointer at this register or even set with store data or changing configurations at the sensor. <coughs> Here we have a, a example communication, this is a LM73 uh, sensor. Um, we see here this is a read communication. Um, we have here the read bit set here is the address from the sensor and then the sensor gives an acknowledgement and sends us two bytes for the temperature sensor. I mean we're having here a little bit uh, different um, sensor with the <coughs> MCP9808. Um, so we have first to make a write uh, command to set the pointer at the a register, the temperature register and then we can read out something. Of course we can set a lot of uh, settings at the sensor, but for us it's at the moment not important, so we just want to read out the temperature from the sensor. Coming back to our breadboard from the sensor or the sensor itself, you're seeing that he has here the two communication lines, the data line and the clock line, and uh, SDA and SCL. Uh, and uh, then we're having here three uh, pins for address. They are here at the breadboard set to uh, um, ground. So <coughs> it's 
the address is fixed, but we could change that, uh, this address if uh, we need another address. And uh, send the ground and um, so supply voltage here. And how con connect we? Uh, how do we connect the sensor to our board? Um, we have here our Nordic developer kit, and you're seeing here um, first we're having here the VDD line. We're connecting it to our VDD line. I mean, um, it can take three volts. Uh, this uh, breakout board's not a problem, and then the ground line we have also to connect, and then the communication line. And the so default for E square C0 is set to uh, the port 0 27 for the clock line, and port 0 pin 26 for the um, data line. We could change this, but we uh, just let the default parameter. There are two different ways to uh, program the sensor. Uh, the first way which we are going, we uh, directly address the E square C resource from our uh, microcontroller. Um, this is a common way, uh, but Safi has also the possibilities to using driver for specific sensors and the lot driver already included. So we uh, start like normal, we're making a copy from our Blink project or whatever project we have and um, then call it uh, my MCP um, 9808. And we can also make um, e square C example or however it's quite easy to exchange this code for NASA sensors. Then we're starting with the studio. I don't forget to delete the build folder. Then we're adding our project. Uh, add existing application and make my MCP example. So we don't, uh, don't forget to close here. Other things. Now we make a build configuration for our board. And before we start, we have to check two things um, when we're using a resource. The first is always uh, the device tree. We will check there if the I square C bus is. Um, uh, Okay, so it's active, so that we can use it, uh, so that it's not disabled. Um, we're seeing here ADC, UART, UART and S, uh, I square C0 tour, and we're seeing there also the SDA pin 26 and SCL, uh, SCL pin 27, yeah, and the status is okay. So um, in the device tree it's enabled. The NASA thing, we have to go in the project file now because we have to activate all the libraries um, and as that they are also compiled. And for this we have to type in config i square c equal ea uh, and I add also Um, another property print f float point that we can later print out easy uh, no not with a spot config cp print yeah that you can later also print out the float point uh, and don't have to make convert of a say uh, convertation or something like this. Um, yeah, we save this. Um, afterwards, we're going in our source code uh, and delete first all the not used things out. And starting nearly from zero. 
sleep timer we can still let inside and here uh, we don't have to we don't need the GPIO driver at this point but we're using the i square c uh, safety device tree and i square c sleep timer we have already here uh, then we're defining the address from our sensor so MCP nine eight zero eight I square C address and like I said before at this configuration where A zero to A two is uh, set to ground we're having uh, hex code eighteen the address you uh, have always to take a look in the data sheet to be sure. Yeah. You find there also the register where the temperature is stored after a readout, and this is the register 5. Uh, so we uh, make this as macro. And uh, then, like usual, we needing our I square C node. C node and getting this with dt node label i square c then we directly define the device square c uh, yeah we're making a d square c zero device because we could also have a i square c one because we're having set two parts device dt get and now we're making here the i square c node For the E square C communication, we need also a buffer variable. Um, so we're making here an U and 8 array uh, from two bytes. So we are receiving later two bytes. This is then enough. Uh, and sending also one byte. So this size is then enough. Uh, now we have also to look in the data sheet. For the calculation, what we getting later is the two bytes. Um, we having the lower byte and the um, upper byte, and you seeing here the formula. Yeah, when it's over zero degree, we have to use uh, this formula, and when it's under zero degree, uh, we have um, uh, this value from here to subtract from two hundred fifty-six. Uh, I have this function already here. I program it already. Um, Seeing this, MCP9808, calculate temperature. This takes the upper byte and the lower byte. And here is just the function what we saw here before. Yeah? Um, and if it's under zero degree, uh, then we have to subtract it. After this preparation, we can start to program the logic of our application. I'm making here a little bit copy and paste that it's going a little bit faster. So first we're making a little bit error handling. So we define an error code variable. And um, after this we are checking if the E2C device is uh, ready and that no error is happening here. If an error happens then we just finish the main and printing out a message. In the next step we are uh, setting the buffer uh, from the e square c buffer we are setting there as the temperature register so this will be in the while loop because we want to read out the temperature uh, every second in this example so we're setting the buffer to the temperature register and now we have to make the right command but for this we are doing a little bit of trick we make a do while loop here <coughs> Uh, making it false, we want that this is only a one-time running. 
Uh, this is for the error handling and we're putting there two commands inside the write command <coughs> so we're checking here uh, so as we're making e squares c write command and sending the temperature register so so um, buffer size here is then one only and um, the function taking the e square c device, the e square c buffer array, the size of the array and the um, address from our sensors. And if there is an error happen, we just making here a break and we going out from this loop uh, and trying it in the next loop again. <coughs> then after setting the, uh, the pointer of the sensor to the temperature register, we read out the temperature. So we're sending an e2c read command, again the e2c device, e2c buffer, this time two bytes because we want to read out two bytes and the e2c address and again when the error happens then we break the loop. And the last step is just that we are <coughs> calculate the temperature from the two bytes which we are receiving, so from the upper a byte and the lower byte and using our uh, before defined calculate temperature and getting here the temperature and printing here out with print case the temperature. We can use here um, a float variable because we activated before in the project configuration that uh, the function print k also take float. Then we just build it and flash it to our board. <coughs> then I open the terminal here and choosing other connected device here. Um, so we have to uh, COM port and you're seeing we're getting here the temperature. Here we're having our board connected with the sensor. And when I place my finger here, you see that the temperature is rising. And when I let my finger down, then the temperature is falling again. This was the first way to uh, access, access our uh, MCP9808 uh, temperature sensor. There is another way over driver. So uh, uh, then we don't uh, access the sensor directly over e square c but it's always important that we know how it's working uh, and sometimes it's even the better way since we're needing just a few lines of code and don't need the driver and like here we just read out the temperature sensor. Uh, but for using a driver we have to adjust a little bit uh, here. We have first to uh, uh, add a few parameters in our project file. So um, First we are adding the sensor modules and also the module for our MCP9808. Uh, now the files will be also included in the compiling process. Another thing is when you are looking in the device tree, yeah, you are seeing we have here also only e c defined and we need also to redefine our sensor but we don't make it in this device tree here, we're making an overlay file. We're clicking then here and then there will be an overlay file created. Uh, can here add something. I make it with copy and paste here. Um, so overlay file. You think that I add just something in the I square C zero and uh, the subnode MCP9808 uh, and with this parameter here. Yeah. Just save it. Now we have also our overlay file and we can start the programming. Now we don't have to take care on the whole technical things anymore. The so I2C address before we are defined in the overlay file you see here. Um, so addresses and so on specified here. So we can delete the whole and also the function for calculating the temperature. The driver will do the things. We can delete the whole thing here. We need of course the sensor driver for the function 
from the sensor library and um, then we need our device so device I will copy it from here it's going faster so device dt get any and then the label we gave before microchip mcp9808 uh, um, and uh, then we're getting our device and we need also a variable to store the parameters, the sensor values. <coughs> then we're making again the so same check if the device is ready. Uh, here we don't have to set the temperature registers, this will also do the driver by its own. And we're needing there also two functions. The process is with the sensor library always the same. We are doing a sample fetch from our device and he read all out all the channels and um, if there's something wrong so then again we're getting an error and we stop this and channel get and uh, then we're reading out the channel from the temperature. So we have only one uh, value here, just only a temperature sensor. But when you're having, for example, uh, SHT31, which have also humidity, you can read out two channels or even more if there are more. And uh, then we just print out the value here with this function. And uh, we build this. and flash this to our board <coughs> and then when we connect again we're seeing here we're getting the temperature and again when I'm putting my thumb there the temperature going up and when I make it away it's going down uh, it's quite convenient, it goes quite fast to implement something like this when we're having another sensor. We can just edit or exchange it and the code is quite similar then. Um, disadvantage is maybe, I didn't find a solution there yet. Uh, when the sensor is not connected at the starting <coughs> from our module, then we're getting here an error. So it's not like R square C, uh, I square C where we can still send the commands also when uh, we are later connecting it. Um, so the device has to be connected before. How do we know now which driver is available, um, for which sensor we have a driver? There is a folder in the NIF Connect uh, kit in, to the tool chain, save here, and there we have the folder drivers. And when we're going here under sensor, as yeah, the module which we activated, seeing here a lot of sensors already, like the BME 280, uh, SHT you're having here, um, uh, BNO from Bosch, uh, 9-axis sensor is also included, if I'm not wrong, uh, or at least not here. Okay, but there are a lot of uh, uh, sensors are already included here. Yeah, I hope uh, this was helpful and you could see how powerful Zephyr is with the device tree. It has a lot of advantages, um, also a few disadvantages. Uh, yeah, you have to get used to it a little bit at the beginning. If you like the video, uh, push the like button and see you in the next video.